I mentioned earlier in this lesson that when we want to use functions, some of them are built into R and we don't have to do anything in order to be able to use them. But other functions are not automatically included. And in those cases, we have to load the packages that contain those functions. There are three ways to do this, and I will show you um, each of them. Those three ways are either executing the command to load them down in the console window, um, or you can include uh, the command library in a script, and then as the script runs, it'll automatically load the package. There's also a way in RStudio to use the RStudio graphical user interface to load the package that way. So let's take a look at how we can do that. If I try to perform the function known as read underscore CSV, that function takes a CSV file that's accessible either through a URL or in your local drive, and it reads it into R as a particular R data structure. If I click run to try to execute that line, it says basically it can't find read underscore CSV. And that's because that is not a function that is a part of basic R. It's a part of an add-on package known as read R. So if I want to uh, load the read R package, I can just simply go down into the console window and type library and then the package name. And when I do this, it doesn't look like anything happened, but now what it's essentially done is made the code in the read R function available to um, my environment. So now if I try to execute this command, it doesn't complain. In fact, it actually loads it as a data item. And I can see what that is. We'll talk about this kind of data structure in a future lesson. So um, I can load the library by typing it straight away in the console or it's actually probably better if I'm using a script to just include the library command as a part of the script itself. So if I just um, highlight both of these lines, it'll load the read our package and it will also execute that line and I don't have to type it in as a separate thing. Uh, another thing that's useful to know, even though it's probably more convenient to, to load the packages from the script, is that the graphical interface has a package manager that's over in the lower right pane. So if I click on the package tab, it will show me all of the package that I, packages that I currently have installed. So for example, if I scroll down to read R, read rectangular text data, you can see that there's a checkbox, meaning that that is actually loaded. If I want to unload it, I can uncheck the checkbox. Uh, so now if I try to run this line again, I have the error that it won't load, but all I have to do is check this box, and now it's basically executed the read our, um, loading read our command for me, and now when I run the line, it works again. So uh, the package manager is actually a a way for you to know, do I already have a package I need? And it also gives you the option of loading it by simply clicking on the checkbox. One issue that you're likely to have if you're just starting to use R or if you've recently installed RStudio is that a particular package that you meet, need may not actually be on your computer. So you can't load a package if you don't have it. So there is a separate process called installing a package. Packages are um, archived online in a network of repositories called CRAN, which stands for Cons Comprehensive R, uh, hmm, I forget what the A stands for, network, archive network, I believe. Anyway, um, if you try to install a package, uh, it will go to CRAN, try to find it, and then if it finds it, it will download it and install it. Um, if you are using Anaconda, a lot of times you won't need to do this because one of the reasons why the Anaconda 
Anaconda insulation is so large and takes so long to install is because it includes many commonly used packages that are used in data science. Um, but if you try to load a package and you get an error message saying that it's not installed, then you may need to go through the installation process. So in the same way that you can load a package either by the command line or in the graphical interface, you can also install either way. So let's take a look at that. I'm not going to actually demonstrate installing this package because I've already installed most of them. Uh, but I will just say that the um, command for installing the packages is just install.packages, and then you put the name of the package. That can either be um, run directly within the console by typing it and then pressing enter, or uh, it can also be included in a script. However, um, it's maybe not a good idea to include the installation command in a script unless you're sure that all of the script users are uh, going to not have that package installed already. It might make more sense to uh, place the package installation commands in a separate document. And then if someone is using this for the first time, they can run that document separately to do the installation. The reason this may be a problem is that I was actually trying running the installation on Redar, which I already had, and it ended up crashing my R Studio. So that's why I don't actually want to do that. For installing packages, it's actually perhaps easier to just use the package manager. For one thing, I can look and see, okay, I already have read R, so I don't need to install it. But if I don't see that I have a particular package that I need, I can click on the install button. And then if I start to type the name of the uh, package, then it'll show up on the list here and I can just select it. Um, and I can also, if I'm interested, figuring out where I want it to end up on the computer. So if I click install, it's basically going to run that install command over here. I am uh, not going to do that uh, because of the problem that I mentioned. Also notice this check button, install dependencies. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but typically you're going to want to have that um, checked. If you think that something is, is wrong with one of your packages, then rather than trying to reinstall it, it's perhaps better to click on the update button. And that will um, allow you to see if there is an update available. I don't see any update available for read R. So I guess I will skip doing that. The last thing that I wanna talk about in this lesson is dependencies, which I mentioned just a moment ago. It turns out that some packages need to also have code from other packages in order to operate. So people write code, they put it in packages, and people write other code that uses the code in the first packages. So these other packages that a certain package depends on is called dependencies. So if you um, check that checkbox that we saw a moment ago to install the dependencies, then when it goes through and installs a over, uh, the overarching package, it will also know to install any of the dependencies if you don't already have them. So it's fairly smart about this. If you already have the dependency, it won't try to reinstall it, but it will basically check to see if it needs to do that as well. There are some large umbrella packages. Um, the, probably the most notable one is one called Tidyverse. And Tidyverse actually uh, is a package which includes many, many other packages in it. So um, many of the packages that people are going to use in data science are found in the tidyverse package. So even though if you just give the command to install tidyverse, it seems like that's not a big thing, but it actually could take a really long time because there are many, many packages and those packages dependencies that will have to be downloaded and installed on your computer. So this could take um, minutes to install for a large umbrella package like that. 
But of course, once you've installed it, you don't need to install it again. You can just simply load those packages as you need them.